The easiest way to understand the shift register is to watch it in action. Before we do, let's examine the inputs and outputs. Every time the trigger input goes from low to high, the data in the 8 bits of the shift register are shifted right, and the data on the in pin is loaded into the first position. If the direction position is high during the trigger transition, the shift register will shift left. The reset pin will reset or clear all the bits of the shift register. The shift register output default setting is to turn on with the first bit, but can be modified to turn on with any one of the shift registers eight bits. Here you can see that it has been set to bit 1.5. In logo version 8.3, you can have four shift registers, two, three, four, and then you're not allowed to insert any more. We're going to do a two minute recap of the material presented in the Inputs 2 video on the shift register bit topic. And then we'll have a look at the problem of daisy chaining multiple shift registers to make a longer one and how to get around that. The shift register is the PLC's version of the children's party game, Pass the Parcel. To demonstrate, let's say we have a machine making product and inspection sensor is connected to input one and it switches high if a faulty product is detected. Another sensor detects each index of the machine when the product is advanced one position along the line. We're using the asynchronous pulse generator to simulate this by giving a pulse every second. Our production line has an ejector air jet six stations after the inspection sensor, and we want to blow the reject parts off when they arrive at that position. I've added a counter, so we can keep track of the pulses from the simulated indexer. I'm showing all eight bits from the shift register for the demonstration, but in practice, we'd only need the sixth bit. So we'll switch on the simulation and we can see our machine is indexing away here, five, six, seven, and we will now generate a reject by turning on the fault. We can see a reject has gone and is moving along the line. And when it gets to station six, the output turns on for the duration of the part being in there. If we hold on to generate two or three in a row, we can see that when we get to station six, the air jet will blow off all three defective parts. In version 8.3, we can have up to four shift registers. And when using shift register bit, we have the option to select any bit that has not been used so far in the program. So you can see shift register 2.1 to 2.8 are available, 3.1 to 3.8 and 4.1 to 4.8. Okay, so let's cascade a pair of shift registers. Here we'll start off with a single 8-bit shift register as before. I have set up down here some the shift register output bits driving the M flags so we can see what's happening on the simulator status bar down at the bottom. So we'll turn on the inject and we can see the bit going along here and it will go up to bit eight and disappear. That's all fine. Don't worry about the blue color on M8. That's the initialization flag, which we're not using in our program. So we're free to use it as a regular flag. Okay, so far so good. We we'll quit the simulation. If we paste in the second shift register and all the monitoring bits that we prepared earlier, we can zoom in a little. St take the output of the first shift register to the input of the second shift register, and we'll need to trigger from our clock over here again. And we can run. Observe the status again. We inject a one, switch off. And watch carefully what happens at M8 here. 
both M8 and M11 turned on simultaneously. Okay, we'll repeat that. M4, 5, 6, 7, both turn on, then jumps to 12. So we have a problem here. Although we have 16 bits between the two shift registers, we're only getting 15 usable bits out of that. Now, the problem here is that shift register 2 is reading its input in the same PLC scan as shift register 1 has set its output. To solve this problem, we need to delay the signal from shift register 1 to shift register 2's input by at least one program scan. To do this, we're going to use the trick we discussed in the flags and outputs video, and that is that the markers or flags and the outputs only get updated at the end of each cycle, effectively giving a one scan delay for each. You can see it in the chaser effect on the bottom of the screen. So to fix this, we're going to put our delay in here. From the constants, we'll select a flag, drop it in. I'll change the number on this so that we keep out of the range of all the other ones we're using for our, our simulation display. M64 will do fine. Wire that up, run our simulation. We'll inject into our shift register and monitor on the status. So watch M7, M8, M11, M12. So it's behaving perfectly now. And we can pass in more than one part. So here we see we have three. We've still got three, 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 three. No stages skipped, no stages repeated. So we can cascade the other two shift registers, three and four, and we just need to put a marker or a cue in between the output of one and the input of the next to ensure that we don't get any duplicates or skipped steps. Finally, we'll just zoom out and get an overview. So here we can see the markers, we can see the individual bits of the shift register being passed along. Lovely. So just remember this will be useful if you need a shift register longer than the default 8 bits and you can go 16, 24 or 32. As always, subscribe and like. Thank you.